All right. So nuclear power is where we're at. Module 38. Learning goals today. R, explain how nuclear energy is used to generate electricity. Describe advantages and disadvantages of nuclear power. Explain radioactivity and radioactive waste. Identify three major nuclear accidents. Okay, uh, both College Board and your textbook is written independently of College Board, but writes for the AP course and tests. Uh, really driven on these three major nuclear accidents, so make sure you know what they are and don't understand what's happening. Uh, look it up, okay? We'll be dark about it. All right, so electricity generated by nuclear energy contained in nuclear fuel is called nuclear power. So generating electricity from nuclear fuel uses almost the same process as electricity from fossil fuels. Uh, we'll talk about what that looks like in a minute. Okay. Uh, the main difference is that nuclear power uses radioactive isotopes, uranium-235, as its fuel. So instead of using um, biofuels such as wood to heat up water to turn to, into steam to turn a turbine, or instead of using gas to do the same thing, you're using the energy coming from um, uranium just naturally decomposing. Okay, isotopes of nuclear fuel are unstable and therefore they're called radioactive. So remember, an isotope is a version of an element where it is unbalanced. Okay, uh, usually more neutrons than anything, and it emits ionization radiation or particles caused by spontaneous disintegration of atomic nuclei. So that just means that the atoms of the substance are breaking down. And so when it's breaking down, if you know anything about chemistry or basic biology, energy is stored in the chemical bonds. So these bonds are breaking and releasing energy. Energy is harnessed from nuclear fuel by causing a fission reaction. When neutrons strike a large atomic nucleus and they split into two or more parts, releasing more neutrons and heat and energy. So, and just to give you an idea of what this looks like, these are not nerd clusters, so they look a lot like them. So a neutron, they're forcing a neutron to hit an atom, and when it hits the atom, this uh, splits apart in a fission reaction. Remember, fusion goes together, fusion goes apart. Okay? And as it is breaking apart, it's releasing these energies. Okay, And that energy is heating up, essentially, the water to turn the turbine to generate the electricity. We go with that. This makes sense. This diagram good. Okay, it's not that complicated. At this level, I'm sure it's complicated if you actually went to go work at a nuclear reactor because you got to be kind of smart to do that. Okay. All right. So nuclear reactor works similar to fossil fuel plants. The distance, the difference is the start of the reaction with fuel rods, which starts a fission reaction and generates steam. In order to make sure the reaction doesn't go too fast or get out of control, we put control rods in there. They're inserted to absorb the neutrons uh, to slow or stop the fission reaction. Okay, So they're going to put rods of this uranium in there and then let it do its thing. But if it goes too fast, it's going to generate more electricity than the system can handle and things will break. Right? We also don't have our electricity for long enough. Um, or if they need to slow down the electricity because they have to shut down the plant to do the maintenance, uh, they're going to put these control rods in. And so the way I like to imagine the control rods is just like gum. Like the neutrons hit the gum and it can't go anywhere. So it slows down the whole system. Um, Aileen, you said your dad works for a, a nuclear power plant? He works on it. Works on it. So uh, how often does he have to like do maintenance on it? Like every year and a half-ish? So he's a pipe fitter. So okay. he goes everywhere else. But he's working there a couple of years now. Yeah. He'll work on it for a couple months at a time. Yeah. So in Callaway County, they have a nuclear reactor, and I worked at one of the banks there. They used to have, I forget what they call it, but essentially they shut down the reactor so that way they can do it for maintenance, and they do it every year, it's year called, and a half. It's called a shutdown. A shutdown, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's what they can put the control rods in. Yes, Brody. So how did, how did like, the fuel rods and control rods work at the Tribune? Remember that? Ooh, I can explain that. We're going to get there. Good question. Nice. It's a good series to watch on Econ Maps. I don't know Maps. Really good. Good enough. Okay, so like I said earlier, essentially it's the same thing as the other ones, but your fuel source is nuclear power as opposed to wood power or oil power or coal power. 
Okay, so your fuel rods, this image is taken from your textbook and they made it look bad. But your nuclear rods are in here and they're doing the reaction and that's heating it up and it's generating, it's, it's running through here, it's generating steam, the steam's coming this way, it's turning the turbine and then the turbine is generating electricity, it's cooling down, coming back into the system, okay? Like I said a couple of modules ago, from here on, it's pretty much the same for every system except for solar. Even geothermal, we'll take a look at that, and that's essentially the same thing. And you think we'd figure out how to get rid of that. That seems to be the issue. Anyways. Okay, uh, so advantage is nuclear power. There's no pollution, air pollution. No, air pollution, excuse me. Okay, for nuclear power. It doesn't emit CO2 when it does it. It's just uranium just doing its thing. Okay, um, it allows for energy of independence of fossil fuels for scarce countries, or for fossil fuel scarce countries. So you don't need gas to get this thing started like you would with a traditional power plant, right? You have to have some sort of fuel to get it started. Once the reaction's in place, just let her go, okay? Uh, and then yeah, there's no greenhouses produced other than to build and maintain. So disadvantages, power plants like this, nuclear power plants are very expensive to build because there's a lot of energy they have to contain. Okay, uh, We still don't really know how to deal with the waste and storage of the waste. Security concerns of having nuclear waste. So obviously you can imagine this much energy would be pretty enticing to somebody who wants to do a lot of destruction, right? The atom bomb, same kind of stuff, okay? Uh, greenhouse gases are produced through mining and construction of these power plants and how to find the uranium. And the possibility of dangerous nuclear accidents. Okay, so we're using the power of something that we used in World War II to destroy a major city to end a war. So put that in perspective. All right. Nuclear fuel is radioactive, remains radioactive for a very long time, even though it is not being used for energy generation. So at some point, it becomes a little too weak to generate as much energy as the grid is going to need. They're going to replace it, but it's still putting off energy. That is called uh, nothing. But radioactive isotopes undergo radioactive decay. So spontaneous release of material from the nucleus when the parent radioactive isotope emits alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. So have you ever heard of like half-life? Have you ever taken like uh, biology or physical science or chemistry? We talk about half-lives and you measure things and like how long does it take for this element to turn into this element? That's the half-life, right? That's what uranium is doing, okay? Uh, that's how they date dinosaur bones and things like that. We'll scrape off some of the materials and figure out how old it is based off of radioactive, radioactive decay and dating to figure out half-lives. Uh, using the half-life measurement allows us to determine the safety of the radioactive nuclear waste. So is this still got a while to it? It's going to be making you grow a third eye? Who knows? I always think of the Simpsons when I think of nuclear biology. Uh, nuclear waste is fuel that can no longer produce enough heat to be useful, but continues to emit radioactivity. I just said that. Okay. Uh, still puts out short electromagnetic waves that can be damaged organs, cause radiation sickness, in death in the short term. So those electromagnetic waves, people say that microwaves are dangerous for pregnant women because they also put out radioactive or electromagnetic waves and they can get into like your organs and stuff like that pretty easily. So microwave might be just as dangerous or that's like the headline, right? Hi. Right. Uh, or like a I will look at it then. Okay. Um, yeah, long term, those waves can damage DNA, leading to cancer and tumors. Okay. Um, just like the skin can get cancer from the sun, you're going to damage your DNA and cause it to do things it shouldn't do. Fetuses, children, and adolescents are most vulnerable to the harmful effects of radiation and radioactive waste, obviously, because you're still developing, right? Your DNA is still very fragile. Okay, half-lights can be measured in BQ. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because I'm just going to butcher it. Okay, or Curry's calculations of half-life can be done to determine how 
many half-lives have occurred and how many radioactivity is remained after that time. So the example they're giving here, uh, this substance is 200 years old. They've determined that 50 years is a half-life. So how many half-lives has it gone through? 200 divided by 50, that's four. For those who hate math, this is not that hard. Okay, you may or may not have a test question that's asking you about half-lives. You're just dividing in half, dividing in half, dividing in half, dividing in half. Got it? Okay, good. Uh, there's not a test question about curries or whatever the B word is. That coral. Uh, typically, spent fuel rods remain a threat to human health for 10, more, 10 or more half-lives. And so uranium lasts a long time, so that's like so long. Long-term storage we consider making a nuclear power plant. Storage methods range from water storage to lead line containers. Lead is really good at making sure things don't get through. It's very dense. Um, Waste cannot be incinerated because it's radioactive and it would literally blow up. Safely destroyed by chemicals. Chemicals won't work on radioactive decay. Or shot into space. I don't know about that one. Like, have you tried it? Are you sure? Uh, or buried in the ocean. You don't want your ocean to become radioactive. That's how you get the Loch Ness Monster. Um, waste must be stored away that it doesn't leach into groundwater, escape, or become exposed to the environment. Uh, yeah, I just think of the Simpsons, whenever their nuclear treatment plant just like seeps into the waterways and Springfield is radioactive. Okay, um, so that is an example of where they keep the nuclear waste. Uh, this looks like an outside facility, but it's in these lead lined containers or barrels. Okay, they call it a graveyard. They call it a graveyard. Man, Halen, you should just be up here. Okay, so they're going to keep it in those things um, to try to prevent it from leaking out. So uh, the project, so Yucca Mountain in, the, in Nevada was intended to be a long-term storage site. The United States abandoned that project in 2010. I bet you can probably guess why. Okay, housing class, there's no money to do that. Okay, um, and people are afraid of nuclear because it can cause damage if mismanaged, right? Uh, just like people are afraid of gluten now because of all the health concerns that are around it and the new developing stuff. But uh, unless you're gluten intolerant, the rest of us should be okay. Um, currently, the U.S. has no national nuclear waste repository or any plans to make one. So likely, we're not switching over to nuclear anyways. Okay, before we go any further, would you consider nuclear energy to be renewable or non-renewable or non-depletable? Not renewable, right? Because eventually we're going to run out of uranium and it's not going to be viable anymore. Okay? Alright, we're on our third standard. So these are the three major nuclear accidents of note. We're going to watch, like I said, that movie video thing next week that goes a little bit more in depth about these. But uh, the big three are Three Mile Island of Pennsylvania, 1979, a water pump failed in reaction. Uh, melted partially. And we have Chernobyl in Ukraine, 1986, backup generator failed, control rods didn't stop, led to explosion. It was the worst accident of all time, I guess. And then in Japan, earthquakes and tsunamis, three reactors melted and melted down due to a flood. Oh, it was terrible. They built this like nuclear power plant right on the edge of this coast. And they had tsunami walls up. But the tsunami, it, the tsunami wall was like, what, 50 feet high? The tsunami was 100 feet high, and it flooded the entire thing. People had to send robots down there to, like, clean up the mess. Same with, like, they try to do it for Chernobyl, but, like, robots were it was so bad. Yeah. Huh. They're still cleaning it up. Really? I did not know that. I don't know much, much about nuclear than when I told you guys. Chernobyl's really good to watch, too. That's on HBO Max. Um, all right, so here's a table comparison of nuclear and non other renewable energies and their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, that's in your textbook, that's on Google Classroom. I'm not going to waste your time doing that. And then, same thing. Okay, questions, comments, concerns about nuclear energy?